Okay, so in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about foreground interest. It's part two from my series from Italy. Foreground interest in architecture photography. Let's go across to Italy to continue the series. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK, and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems, and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. Okay, so we have our subject, the baths, of course, but now we need to look around and find a foreground subject. Of course, we've got really lucky because we have water. Okay, so the concept of a foreground uh, interest in a photo is, of course, not a new concept. But in any good photograph, you've got like the foreground, the midground, and the background. Why should that be different in architecture photography? It shouldn't, it should be exactly the same concept. What is a foreground? Well, of course, uh, the closest part to the camera is the foreground of the image. Uh, the background is essentially the subject where you're looking through to the, the end of the view. And the middle, the midground, is the bit in between those two subjects. So if you've got a plain empty room in architecture, let's say, and you've got no foreground interest, it can detract from the image. Not always. If you're shooting a one-point perspective, for example, that could be something a little bit different. But if you've got an empty, boring foreground, that could take away from the image entirely. And that's something we try to avoid. So adding foreground interest can make your images from sort of average to stunning very, very quickly. Foreground interest is more than just about putting your subject front and center. It is a focal point that complements your subject and adds to an already pleasing photograph. Okay, so because we're shooting in a small space, I say as I delicately poise myself over this water, as we're shooting in a small space like this, we might have to work with the angles and see which one works. I have been to this location before, but it was in the winter, so that means perhaps we're gonna have to have some challenges with, with lighting, unfortunately. The sun is moving behind the camera's position there and drifting away, and hopefully that's then gonna take away from this here, this sort of harsh light that's falling on these little steps. And once that happens and the sun moves, this will be a much more interesting shot. made uh, these beautiful little stepping stones basically so that I can position my tripod and not get wet. However there has been a few close calls as you can imagine stepping across the little bricks as well all the way across <laughs> and this one here a challenge. However what we might need to do is balance out the scene a little bit 
And what I mean by that is we might need to position our camera in such a way that we get just enough foreground interest to balance out and compensate against the actual image itself. So make sure we're not including too much foreground and make sure we're not including too little. I've already predetermined a height of my camera. I've got it over there. And uh, we're positioning in such a way that we've got just enough foreground interest. There's only one thing that we need to talk about that I've not included, and that's here. It's a polarizer filter that we need to include. And that'll help me cut out glare and reflections on that water so we can get the nicest possible result. We'll add that to the front of the lens on the wide angle and we're good to go. Okay, polarizer is activated. So now, normally, <laughs> I say normally, we would explore a couple of perspectives and try to understand what works. But what I've actually done is already predetermined a camera position here for my go-to one-point perspective, lining up the window in the center and the two doors left and right with the puddle or the pool in the base of the image. We could also though go off to one side here and try shooting towards this little door with some really beautiful light pouring in. That would give us a different perspective. I'll do this one afterwards, maybe in a portrait orientation as well. But I'm good to go here. I'm basically ready to shoot. You can see that I've got this low-ish height on my tripod with the center column down to try to get a bit of that water element into my shot. I've got a framed up quite nicely that I've got quite enough here up in the ceiling. I'm going to film here on this camera so that you can actually see my composition because obviously where I'm positioned is very, very difficult to actually do that. So I'm going to just film now uh, on this particular one just so that you guys can kind of see uh, my framing overall. Uh, which, to be honest with you, is pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. I like the colours. Uh, you can see down here, uh, we've got this water in. Obviously, it's cropped a little bit in, in camera. Uh, and we can also see, I'm just going to brighten this up so you can see everything. We've got the water, we've got the two doors. So we've got the door there, and of course the one over there. And at the top here, uh, we've got the, uh, the green, um, this thing. We've got the green coming through the top. And of course, in my actual framing, there's a little bit above that as well. So that overall, we've got like a, a scene that works. You can see here on the polarizer, what I've actually, I'm doing is, is you can see in the bottom corner of the image, just down, uh, where is it? Just down here, as I turn the polarizer, you can see that it's actually affecting the water and just taking some of that glare off, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I've, the next thing is I've got my settings, it's F8. I've got my ISO at 160. I don't need to be as low as 100 just to bring up that shutter speed a little bit. I could even go to ISO 200 here. It's not a problem with the camera that I'm using, of course. My shutter speed in my middle exposure is 3.2 seconds, which means it will eliminate any of this movement in the water that I'm creating when I'm rocking on these rocks and on this, on this pool. So there's a little bit of wobble here in the water and I don't want too much of that occurring in the actual image. If you needed a longer shutter speed, you could go to F8. Uh, I'm on F8, but you could go to F9, F11 if you wanted to get your shutter speed a bit longer, but I really do not need this. In fact, I am actually could even reduce mine down a little bit to help out my shutter speed to 7.1 or 6.3 um, because there's really no need. So 7.1 gives me 3.2 as well still because the light's just changed and ISO 160. I think that's everything we need. Next, I've just repositioned my camera a little bit more. I've pushed my tripod leg in and pushed it back as far as I can get the camera without not being able to see it with the flip out screen. So I've basically, I've basically done that. And I've done that on purpose because I want to just get as much into the image as possible. Now I'm going to be doing this really with just one exposure. Um, it can be done. Uh, the highlights are protected. The shadows at the moment are perfect. And of course we've got our polarizer in position. If I needed to increase that, uh, that, that brightness, I could just do that a little bit to four seconds. And I feel like my cam camera's dynamic range should be able to adjust for everything else. So I'm going to shoot this now. I'm good to go. There's only one thing missing. I need to get you out of my frame.
I've got myself in a new position. I need to crack on because the light's fading. It's hard to record now. But basically, I love the light that's fading in through the, uh, the door opposite. It's really cool. Um, I've managed to, I'm going to shoot this with the sat in pretty much the similar settings. The only difference here now is, is in my camera here, which I'm going to show you in a second, I want to crop in and I want to be able to move my polarizer around so that you can actually see what I'm shooting. Let's have a look in camera. Um, this is in camera and pretty much what I'm doing here is um, I'm showing you exactly what I want to get. I've decided on a landscape orientation after all. Um, if we look at this scene as a whole, I'm going to position myself so I'm just off the rule of thirds. And what, I'm, what the first things that I need to do here is I really need to think about, uh, there's a couple of bits that I need to think about, but the first one is definitely going to be getting rid of those reflections. So if I just turn my polarizer around here on the front, you can see there on the water, it's just eliminating those a little bit. I want it around about where it's sitting there. So I just push my camera down a little bit and there we kind of go. Um, first of all, I've got my tripod in a really nice sturdy position. Um, I also like, this is at 15 mil, but I, prefer, I actually think I like it when I just crop out, not just the window by the way, but also the light. We could bring it up, but if we bring it up like this, we get a bit more of the window at the top. I want neither of these bright spots. I think they're a little bit distracting. So I'm gonna point down a little bit, but then just zoom in a tiny bit just so that we're literally on where I want to be. I like the water, I like the reflections, the doors on the rule of thirds, the light is spectacular. That's pretty much me. I'm, going to, I'm basically going to shoot that. Okay, and the settings for this is going to be 1.5 1, 1 seconds, 1.6 seconds. ISO uh, nice and low, we'll do 160 and we'll do 7.1. I'm going to put my bracket in on again, uh, just to make sure that I maintain the detailing. Um, so I'm going to do a brighter exposure by one stop and one stop under as well. But I believe the centre one should be pretty perfect. Okay, so that's basically everything. I've completed the shot. Let's jump into post-processing and get this edited. This blue needs to pop. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that video. I really love the edits there on the plunge pool. They're two of my favorite photos from this summer so far. I love the blue tones, that pool. And of course, that polarizer filter that we used really enabled us to punch through them reflections and get some really beautiful reflections in that water. Loved it, great couple of shots. I, two of my favorites, like I say, from this summer. Uh, if you've got any comments, leave them in the section below. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. Plenty more content where that came from. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification, you'll be alerted when I upload next week, which will be on Sunday, I promise you, once again, on time. See you then.